You probably have antivirus software on your computer right now. It's something we all rely on to keep our data safe and protect us from the endless threats lurking online. But what if I told you that the very software designed to protect you might have been sending sensitive files to a foreign government? It sounds crazy, right? But that's exactly what the US government accused the Russian cybersecurity company Kaspersky Lab of doing. Kaspersky Lab, founded in 1997, was once a global leader in the cybersecurity industry. The company protected over 400 million devices worldwide and had a solid reputation until a hacking scandal in 2017 changed everything. Back in 2017, the Wall Street Journal reported on an NSA contractor who had classified material stored on their personal computer, one that just so happened to have Kaspersky antivirus installed. According to the report, Russian hackers allegedly exploited the software to detect and upload the sensitive files back to servers in Russia. To escalate the situation, the New York Times later reported that Israeli intelligence had informed the US government about Russian hackers using Kaspersky's antivirus software to infiltrate millions of devices. The hackers allegedly leveraged the software's scanning capabilities to identify and retrieve sensitive NSA files, which fueled the suspicion of a connection between Kaspersky and the Russian government. In September 2017, the US Department of Homeland Security ordered all federal agencies to remove Kaspersky software from their systems. Other nations quickly followed suit. The UK and the Netherlands advised government entities to avoid using the software on systems handling classified information. By 2022, Germany had also issued warnings against Kaspersky products, citing similar concerns. Throughout all this, Kaspersky Lab has consistently denied any wrongdoing. The company explained that uploading files to their servers was part of their malware detection process, a standard industry practice. But that explanation didn't ease concerns about the possibility of Russian government involvement. Eugene Kaspersky, the company's founder, repeatedly denied any connections to Russian espionage. He stated, quote, If the Russian government comes to me and asks me to do anything wrong, or my employees, I will move the business out of Russia. We never helped espionage agencies, the Russians, or any other nation. In an attempt to rebuild trust, Kaspersky Lab launched a global transparency initiative. This effort included opening transparency centers, where governments and partners could review its source code. The company also relocated much of its data processing to Switzerland, a country known for its neutrality and stringent data protection laws. Despite these efforts, the damage to their reputation, particularly in Western countries, was hard to repair. By 2024, the US Department of Commerce issued their final determination. In June, the U.S. government officially banned Kaspersky Lab, its affiliates, and its parent company from selling products in the United States. Following the ban, Kaspersky announced it would cease operations, with plans to shut down and lay off staff by July 20th. Shortly after, in September 2024, Kaspersky informed customers that their cybersecurity protection would now be provided by Ultra AV, a company owned by Pango Group. However, this transition caused confusion. Many users discovered that Kaspersky software had been quietly replaced by Ultra AV without their consent. To make matters worse, some users found that Ultra VPN, a virtual private network service, had also been installed on their devices without warning. These unexpected changes raised serious questions about the relationship between Kaspersky and Pango Group, and left many people uneasy about the security of their data and their computers. Understandably, Many users were upset. A trusted antivirus provider had suddenly disappeared, and unfamiliar software had taken its place. Many people were left wondering, can Ultra AV, a relatively unknown company, really be trusted to protect their devices? This whole situation highlights just how tangled cybersecurity and global politics have become. As governments crack down on software they see as potential security risks, other tech companies may face similar situations in the future. For both individuals and businesses, this case demonstrates the importance of evaluating not just how well security software works, but also where it comes from and the broader implications of using it. So what about you? Did you notice Kaspersky being replaced with Ultra AV on your devices? Did you stick with Ultra AV or have you switched to something else? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.